So the other night, a couple nights ago, um, I went into a prophetic dream. Somebody began to prophesy to me in the dream. And it was a, it's a prophetic voice that people love and people know. It's actually a prophetic couple. And they both start prophesying to me in the dream and said, What you're doing matters. Keep digging. Keep plowing. Don't give up. Keep digging. Keep plowing. Keep digging. Keep plowing. And I mean the authority on it, guys. It hit my spirit like, mm. And God woke me up in the middle of the night out of this dream. And I could hear this echoing in my in my mind, you know, in my spirit. I could feel the presence of the Lord, and I just sat there, and I saturated in it, and I thought about it like I've trained you guys. You know, think about your dreams right when you remember them. Don't go right back into sleep. Think about it for a minute. Repeat it in your mind, and it helps your mind log that, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So, um, So I was thinking about it, and then I fell back asleep, okay? And then I went into another dream. And as I'm going into this dream, I'm thinking about the word in the dream. I'm thinking about the dream I just had. So God's replaying the dream to me again, telling me, keep plowing, keep digging. What you're doing matters. That's why I'm telling that to you guys. What you're doing matters, even if it looks like it's not. Sometimes you got to dig the hard soil. Sometimes you got to plow in the rocky ground. But that doesn't mean that it won't at one point be prepared where you can put that seed in, you can water that seed, and your harvest will come forth. Keep digging. Keep plowing. Don't quit. Don't back up. Push. Press. Keep going. Okay, so while I'm in this dream, the, the Lord, I have another dream. And the Lord opens a journal up to me. And I'm looking in this book. I'm looking in this journal. And I'm reading it as if I had written the words. But I knew that I hadn't written the words because I hadn't seen these before. And at the top of the journal, guys, it says um, in big letters... Well, not big, big letters, but big enough on the title. It says Panda, comma, Africa, comma, and Asia. Then in capital letters underneath it, it says Unchurched Nations. Okay, Panda, which represents China. When you think about a panda, you think about China, right? So I saw Panda, comma, Africa, comma, Asia. Underneath that, it says Unchurched Nations. And I'm thinking, wow, Lord, this is interesting, you know, in the dream. But I keep reading. My eyes are drawn down the page, and in really large capital letters, that's almost taking up the entire middle of a notebook page, it says, I PUSH, E-Y-E-P-U-S-H, in all capital letters, I PUSH. Then I wake up. Actually, the Lord proceeded to show me more pages, but I woke up in, in not remembering those pages. I was only allowed to remember the first page. And I asked the Lord, Lord, why did you keep flipping and why did you show me more? And then I woke up and I couldn't see the rest of the pages. And he said, that's because I'm going to give you more words like this, but I don't want you to know them yet. Therefore, another time, I want you to focus on this one word that I'm giving you. And guys, I've been asking the Lord for pinpoint, prophetic, accurate words that are really going to cause real change and real fruit and really cause us to say, hey, the Lord is speaking. Hey, we're hearing the Lord. And so I woke up and I was like, Lord, why did I see panda, comma, Africa, comma, Asia? Why didn't, why didn't you just put China? And he said, it's just a riddle. It's to make you pay attention, you know, to why I put panda separately. Because I wanted you to focus on China specifically. But there's going to be other nations across Africa and Asia, the unchurched nations, guys, that are about to experience an eye push. Now, I didn't know what an eye push was. So when I woke up from this, it's not like this was something I was reading or studying or even heard about. Didn't know anything about it. I said, Lord, this is a strange word. What is I push? So guys, I Googled it in my phone, definition of I push. And I found out that, that, you know, like if people push on their eyes, don't do this. This is not good for you. But it's actually a thing where people push on their eyes and it causes them to see colors and swirls. Sometimes kids do this as a game or, you know, playing around or you might accidentally have pushed in on your eye too hard and you, you know, saw lights and flashes and colors. But it's an actual thing in, a, in the dictionary. And I said, that's, that's strange. You know, I push. And I said, wow, Lord. So this is funny because he loves to speak in riddles. He's saying that he's going to cause an eye push in these nations in their seer, in their sight, in their spiritual senses, that he's going to cause an eye push where literally they're going to go in and see the things of the spirit. 
maybe not, you know, swirls, you know, but the colors of the spirit, the colors of revelation, they're going to begin to see in the spiritual realm. And it's going to cause them as if they're in another dimension to go into, you know, the spirit of the Lord. Like that's what the Lord is saying. And I said, Lord, I feel like you're saying that you're going to supernaturally, um, you know, confirm this by a by a sign. You know, there's going to be a sign of an eye push. It just, you know, why did he put it in all caps, guys? You know, we got to pay attention, you know, to the details. When he's focusing like that, he put it on all capital letters. And I said, why eye push? There's something to that. Or you could have told me another way, right? He could have told me some other way. He could have written out, you know, awakening in China or revival in China. And we would have loved it just as much. But why did he give me the word I push? There's something to that. We're going to see something with these words. I don't understand it. I don't know. I think it's going to be something in technology maybe. And it's actually going to be called an I push. So I just feel that in the Holy Spirit that we're going to see something like that. So we'll see it come forth. I really believe that he's going to confirm it. There's going to be technology with the I pushing like digitally technology, that the eye is literally going to push things. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't understand it all, but God does. And he knows his riddles and he knows his timing. So we're going to see that coincide, guys, when there's something in technology that breaks forth with the eye push, that there's going to be you know, a significant spiritual awakening. We're going to see the name of Jesus freely lifted up in the nation of China and the nations in Africa and Asia that are unchurched. Mark my words. The Lord gave me that word. It's not my word. It's the Lord's word. So I'm excited that he gave that to me. And I said, Lord, thank you for trusting me with that word. And guys, he was flipping the pages in a big book. And I knew that I was seeing lots of words, but I wasn't allowed to focus in on the words or know them in the detail yet. Because when I woke up, I was like, Lord, why did you keep flipping and showing me all those things? And I want to see those. I want to know all of it, right? We want to know it all. But he said, I'll reveal it when it's time. And I'm going to give you other words like this. Or I'm going to show you pinpoint accurate things that are happening. And I said, thank you, Lord, for that. So... You guys pray, just pray and pray the will of the Lord, the, the Lord's will come forth in that. You know, that his right timing and what he wants to come forth for China at the right timing. And we just thank you, Lord, that you're releasing that in the spirit right now, Father, that your unchurched nations are coming to you. And your word says, God, can a nation be born in a day? And Lord, I believe for that. I believe for a revival in a day and awakening in a day, Lord. I believe in a day, Lord, that you shake the nations, Lord, that you shake China, shake Africa, shake Asia, Lord, shake your unchurched nations. I thank you that the name of Jesus will be lifted high above every other name, Father. I believe that the name of Jesus will be seen, God, out in the streets and on flags, Father, and above buildings, and that as the freedom comes, Lord, in China, there's going to be freedom to preach the gospel. There's going to be freedom to lift up the name of Jesus again, Father, and the Christians are going to be so excited and so full of joy. They're going to be flying the name of Jesus, guys, like flags above the nations. They're going to be flying the name of Jesus above their churches, guys. We're going to see this, and it's going to be a wonderful day in the presence of God, a wonderful day in the breakthrough of the spirit of what this world is going to see. The wave is here. We are in it. We are here, guys. So, Father, I thank you for that word. Woo! Keep, keep pressing, keep going, keep digging, keep plowing. What we're doing matters. The fasting matters. Guys, we've been asking for an increase in the prophetic voice. It matters. God's listening. He's seeing. He's hearing. He's responding to our faith. He's responding to our prayers. He's ready to pour out. He's excited to pour out. He's so full of ecstatic joy to pour out upon his children that love him, that believe him, that want to listen to him. I just believe him. I believe, you know, in, in all things. I believe all things. I believe it. All things are possible with God for them that believe. I feel such a freshness of the Father's heart Guys, for the body of Christ right now, I feel the Father's heart pouring out over the body of Christ in a new way where he's going to cause us to know the Father, you know. We feel like we know Jesus, you know. We know Jesus. We know what he's done for us. And he walked the earth and he talked to us and he told us so many beautiful things and we've got his words in our heart. And Jesus even said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, right? Right? But I feel that the Father is going to draw the body of Christ close to Him 
to his heart. There's something about the revelation of the Father right now, and I really believe it's connected to this awakening that is springing forth in the earth this year, today. It's already here. We're in it. We've been seeing revival. We've been seeing the waves of joy. Just just put your hands out and take a drink of the Father right now. Just the Father's love, the Father's joy, the Father. Just, just picture the Father's face. Picture Him smiling at you. Picture Him excited about this wave and this awakening and, and the harvest of souls and the fish coming in. You know, He gave me that dream about the spirit throwing warriors. He gave me that word. And then He gave me that dream. And He said, the spears for the fish. And God is so excited about the fish coming in. There's going to be so many, guys, so many that just our prayers are bringing in, you know, that we may not even know, we may not even see them just in their homes, just around us in the atmosphere around us. There's a, there's a, you know, we radiate the glory from our homes, from our lives. There's, you know, from, from miles around us, people are being touched and we don't even know it. We don't even realize it. I think we'll know it when we get to heaven, but we carry the glory. We do. We carry the atmosphere of heaven. If we've yielded ourselves to the Holy Spirit, we have no sin between us and, and the Father. You have no sin between you and Him. You've given Him every place in your heart. You're yielded to Him. You're walking in His love and His glory and His joy. And He's just going to pour out of your belly rivers of living water wherever you go. And I have nothing to do with it. I'm not the source of joy. I'm not the source, you know, of healing, of miracles. But he just chooses to use us, doesn't he? He chooses to use us, these vessels. He pours out the treasure in earthen vessels. He pours out his glory through us because it's just how he, it's just what he wants to do. It's so beautiful and humbling and glorious all at the same time. And he chooses treasure in the earthen vessels. Ooh, I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful that I know in the spirit, and you guys have to pray for, for my ability to communicate to you things that I know and feel and sense in the spirit. Pray for me that I can really release what I'm sensing, but I'm telling you, that the Father is opening up secrets of His heart to us in this season. I'm telling you that the eye push that He's doing for these unchurched nations are also happening for the body of Christ. He's going to cause our eyes to see and know Him. To see and know Him. The glory realm is going to become more connected to us, more open to us. I, I need the vocabulary, Lord. I need the vocabulary. I need the words to, 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 to make you guys catch it. I think you can catch this in the spirit, you know. But start paying attention to the Father in your prayers. Start talking more to the Father. We love Holy Spirit too. We love Jesus too. And we have a revelation of them. But I feel the Father wanting our faces right now. Turn to Him. And there's going to be secret treasures of the Father's heart revealed to you. There's always something connected to the Father with revivals in the past, guys. It's like, it's like you know, when He poured out in Toronto. And it was the Father's blessing. Yeah, I feel Him so strong. I just want to weep. I feel His, his kindness. I, I can't explain it, guys. I, I wish I could explain it. There's something happening with me and the Father, my relationship with the Father. I've always loved the Father. I've always known the Father, but He's opening up something deeper in the body, knowing the Father. It's like Jesus knew the Father, you know? You know, He said, I am in Him, and He is in me, and we are one, you know? And, and, and I feel that, that the children of God are going to be able to to start feeling and saying that I am in the Father and the Father is in me and we are one. We are together. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Don't you want to be able to say that to people? Like you're so close to the Father's heart. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And there's something about the Father's heart and the Father's love connected to this awakening 
people are going to get a revelation of, of his love, of his, his joy, of his gentleness, his kindness, his playfulness, his, his ecstatic joy. He's so full of joy. You guys know this, but he, you know, if you don't know the Father's joy, ask him to open up his joy to you and, and feel you know, feel him, feel him. I always tell people, feel, you know, feel him. Don't try to think and don't try to know it here. You know, because this is our mind and our mind is great for getting a lot of things done. But our spirit and our heart is where we feel, where we sense, where we think. Out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water, you know. And out of our heart, the mouth speaks. And the Father is going to open our heart again. This is part of the awakening, the awakening of the heart. You know, God's called me to lead people in. Don't know why he called me, guys. I, I didn't pick it. You know, I wasn't doing Facebook lives. I was. I didn't even want to. We did fasting and praying and years back for our nation, for the elections, for God's will to come forth. You know, because I felt that. I felt the Lord tell me to do that. And then after that, I just wasn't on. And I wanted to for a while, but then I just didn't. I'm just being honest with you. I, I was fine. I was happy. But the Lord called me to start these sessions. I have to obey my Father. And these are His moments and His times with you. And there's going to be such a closeness of the Father's heart with His children again because He longs for it. You know, He he longs to speak to us face to face and heart to heart, mouth to mouth. You know, He doesn't want his children to always have to go to a, a minister, you know, or a person with the word of the Lord. And those are great because they confirm to the body we need those for structure, right? We need those for community, to, to link arms hand in hand. I understand all of that. I understand the importance of the body and the community and every member playing their part, fitly joined together until we've reached the fullness of Christ. I understand that. But there's the individual place in the relationship that you have with God that nothing can feel. Nothing can feel the face-to-face experience He wants to have with you. Just, just have that. You know, even in your heart right now, you can just feel Him bubbling. You can just feel the love for Him just bubbling up. Just, just let that reach out. Just reach out. You know, stretch out your hand to the Father and say, I want to know you more. I want to know my Father I want to know your heart. I want to know your your feelings, your thoughts. I want to know you more. And as this revelation of the Father's heart begins to pour through the body of Christ or we're addicted to His love more than everything else, there's going to be so much weeping at the altar, healing at the altar. There's going to be so much laughter at the altar. There's going to be just that the joy of the Father's heart is going to be coming forth. Understanding how much He loves us is going to bring us into the joy of the Lord like we have never experienced. You know, that's what really bursts that joy is knowing the Father loves you, knowing that you're completely forgiven, knowing you're completely wanted, knowing you're completely loved by Him. doesn't matter how many mistakes you make, how much you mess up. He loves His baby girls. He loves His baby boys. He loves us with all of his heart unconditionally. And he will help us through everything. doesn't matter what it is. He's going to help you in every area that you need. Oh, guys, I look tired. I'm so sorry. I was waking up all night, just all night long. Sometimes the Lord just wakes me up all night. And I just feel the presence of the Lord and I'm just in prayer, you know. Ooh. Let the Father's love just come on you. You know, just like I'm telling you, we're going to see it. I keep saying this over and over, but I need to reiterate it. We're going to see an outpouring of the Father's love during this wave, during this awakening, during this, you know, final great harvest awakening time. This harvest of 2020 that Bob Jones prophesied about, you know, we are got the momentum moving forward towards it right now, and God is, is literally pouring out in his body right now so that we can receive the loss that are about to come in in 2020, guys. They're already coming in, but there's going to be so much coming in. We have to be ready. We have to be 
full of the presence of God, full of the glory, full of the joy, full of freedom. We got to be ready. We got to we got to just be healed. We got to be healed. You know, we've got to be healed in our hearts and and just let everything go and let God heal you during these these months, during this season, during these next couple of years. Just let healing just pour into you. That's what these sessions are going to do. They're just going to bring you into healing. So many people said they've gotten healed, not just physically, emotionally in their hearts set free fire coming upon them. I have nothing to do with it. Absolutely nothing. He's chosen to use them. He's chosen to pour through them. He gets all the glory for everything that he does in your lives. Lord, just release right now your presence, Father, just on us just so that we could step into this place. Lord, just open it up in the Spirit. Right now, just impart, Father, your love on everybody watching right now. Just your love, God. Just your love, Lord. Cause them, cause them, Father. Cause them to fill you. Cause them to drink from you. Cause them to yield to you, God. Cause them, Father. Cause them, Lord. In the places, Lord, that maybe they shut off to you in, in their hearts. Maybe there's places you've shut off from the Lord and you haven't let the Father's love in those places. And God, just melt it right now. Just melt it, Lord. Just come, just come so hot with your love, Lord, so heavy with your love. Lord, just come, just come like a rushing wind, Father, with your love right now on people. Just melt it, Lord. Just melt everything that stands in the way between them and you. And guys, you just gotta yield. Just yield to him. Put your hands out. Put your put your head back. Just lift your your face. Let the King of Glory come in today. Let him come in. He wants to live in you. He created you for a habitation of the Spirit of God. He wants you to be His temple. He wants to fill you with His glory. You don't have to beg. You don't have to plead. You don't have to say, why, God? You just have to yield. You just have to drink. You just have to know how much He loves you. I pray that you would know it. I pray that you would feel it. For there are no words to explain, to describe the greatness of the love of God. And it's like, you know, Paul tried to describe it. You know, he tried to describe the love of Christ. And it's just hard. There's no height. There's no depth. Right? You can't, you, you know, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Right? No, nothing, no, no angel, no principality, not death, not sickness, not persecution. He tried to describe, you know, the love of God. He tried to describe the unfathomable greatness of it, the depth of it. And you know, there's no words to describe the deep places of his love. You can only feel it. There's no word there's no word for it. He, he can't be put into like a definition, you know. He's, he loves us so much. I feel his love right now. Oh, just feel him right now. He's got such a fire in him, you know, the Father does. He's got such a fire in his heart. He has such a longing to, to drink of our love, you know. He's got a fire in him. He longs for it to be quenched by us, you know that. You know that we, we give the Father the desire of his heart, you know. And I want him to feel so loved. I want him to feel so appreciated. I want him to feel so honored. I just felt him so strong the other night. It's kind of personal for me, but the Father showing me his joy. I've had so many encounters with the Father, but this was a new place, and I can't explain it in words. But the Father showed me his joy. I went into an encounter. I can't explain it to you in words. I can't explain it to you. I always say, Lord, please help me communicate the words, but there's not any words.
words. I wish there were words. <laughs> There's no words. To how he feels. There's no words. They don't do him justice. Words don't do him justice. Words have no place. In the presence of God, there are no words. <laughs> There's no words to describe how much joy he has over your life. Just feel it right now. Lord, I pray you cause them to feel it. Just close your eyes and feel the Father's joy. Close your eyes right now. Feel His love. Feel Him. Know Him right there. Know Him by the Spirit. Not by your mind, not by knowledge. But by the Spirit, know Him. And you do. I know you guys do. <laughs> he's going to cause us to walk in such a revelation of his love and joy and the discernment of the Holy Spirit is going to cause us to move in the prophetic out of this place of love and complete abandonment to him ooh there's going to be such a clear prophetic flow from the heart of the Father that is bubbling up inside of you. You won't be able to contain it. And you won't know why you know it. You won't know why you know things. You're just so one with the Father that you just feel His heart for people. I'll stand in front of people and I just know them. I just know them in the Spirit. I'm able to prophesy to them accurately what's going on in their life and exactly what they need. And it's spiritually discerned. It's spiritually understood. There's no way to communicate even how to prophesy to people. You, you've just got to yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. You want to move more in the prophetic. Get the Father's heart. Get wrecked by His love. Be in love with Him. And then when you go and stand before people, you yield. That's all you do. You just yield. And he'll just cause you to know. He'll just cause it to bubble from your spirit. And you'll be able to be a fountain of life to them. Because you didn't try to have to hear or try to have to feel or try to have to figure out or nothing. You don't operate from here, guys. I can't say it enough. You operate from your spirit, from your heart. The spirit of, of man is the candle of the Lord. You know, you move out of the unction of the Holy Ghost. You move from Him. He'll cause you to flow. Ooh, I feel the presence of the Lord. I know you guys are feeling the presence of the Lord just while we are on here. Just receive His touch right now, a fresh touch, you know, and just, and just any places of lack in you, or any places of doubt in you that has caused you to hold back, just let the Father's love melt that off right now. You can just trust Him like a little child. Just yield and trust Him. If He can use a donkey, He can use me. We've heard it all the time. He can use anything. Just yield. Just yield. The more you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, the more you're baptized in His love, the more you're baptized in His glory, the more you'll just be somebody who moves out of that place. You just move in the glory because it's where you live. It's where you breathe. It's where you never want to leave. In Him we live and move and have our being. Isn't it nice? That's right, Veronica. He is so good, so faithful, 
so merciful. <sighs> I feel such a refreshing. Just be refreshed in the presence of the Lord right now. Just be encouraged in the presence of the Lord right now. Let me see what time it is. I think there's a clock in here. Let me see what time it is. 12.58. Okay. Shh. Because he lives. That's right. Sing that, girl. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Oh, yes. Shh. Something fresh is released. You know, Monday and I have been preaching for years, ministering for a long time. And there is something fresh. And you guys know that. We all feel that. I wish I could communicate it. In, in the spirit of the Lord. But the wave has been released. We are in it. We are here. Just because we haven't heard news programs of revivals exploding doesn't mean it's not happening. Because it is. You have yet to hear about all the places that are exploding. Because it's not going to be one place, guys. It's going to be everywhere. There's many places that the Lord is just going to come in like a mighty rushing wind. They're not going to even know what hit them. They're going to be on the floor. They're going to be they're going to be weeping, wailing, crying, laughing, you know, laid out in their pews, standing up, sitting down in chairs, standing on chairs, under chairs. They're going to be everywhere. People are going to be rolling back and forth. <laughs> this is happening already, but we've seen it start to happen the past couple months. And you know, the Lord gave Chuck Pierce a word that there was going to, from last year, that there was going to be 10 months of turmoil and then there was going to be breakthrough. And you know when the breakthrough started, guys? It started in February this year. That was the end of the 10 months. Did you guys notice how the Lord was taking us through our sessions, taking us through the, me talking about the attack on the secret place, talking about the warfare, talking about being pressed, talking about drinking from the cup of the Lord in the presence of our enemies. It was all during that, that time, coming out from February through March and April. It was bringing people out of that turmoil place. And now there's been like such a breakthrough we've been coming into with the joy of the Lord, the presence of the Lord, the glory of the Lord. I don't understand it. I just know when I feel Him doing something, I just know. I just know that you know. You know that you know. And here we are. We're in the joy wave. I'm telling you. We are in the joy wave. We are in it. It's here. This is it. You're going to get blasted by joy. You're not even going to know how it hit you, where it came from, where it's going. You're not even going to know why. Just spiritually discerned. Do you know people from our sessions in Kansas, when we were just in Kansas, you know the joy broke out and they said this hadn't happened like that there. These kids that were being touched by joy, they'd never experienced this before, guys. And do you know people were going home from these sessions and they said they were going to their prayer groups and that joy was pouring out in the prayer groups. Guys, it was real impartation. This is, this is the Holy Spirit doing this in His body. And we are carriers. There was real impartation that happened of the joy from the Holy Ghost. And then they took it to where they were and joy broke out. Do you know I have people messaging me saying that joy is breaking out in their living room with their families? They're just, they're just studying the Bible. They're just having prayer time. Their kids are getting hit with the joy because I'm telling you it's a sign that the youth are being blasted by the joy of the Lord. I'm telling you we're going to see many youth. And I wouldn't be surprised if the youth are moved on by joy even more than the adults are. The adults are going to get it too. But I really believe there's going to be a sign in the youth of joy hitting them because... You know, people can't analyze when a young person starts rolling around on the floor laughing hysterically for 30 minutes, you know, and they're like four or three or five years old. You know, young kids don't do this and they're not copying anybody when it happens by themselves. You know, so with all the skeptics can say, well, they're copying something they've seen. No, they're not. And they would never have enough control 
self-control to cause themselves to roll around on the floor for 30 minutes to an hour howling. A five-year-old, if you can get them to do something for one minute, you're doing good, right? <laughs> Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about, moms out there. And the moms are going to see our kids rolling around the floor laughing, and we're going to know it's the Holy Ghost. We're going to know because we know our kids. Our kids don't do this. No, this is not something they're copying. Mommy and Daddy don't roll around in our living room laughing, you know, on a off, you know, on a common everyday thing. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord, do it for Sarah's kids. It's just going to happen. You guys message me when it does. It just gets me more excited. Every message I get, people are messaging me and saying joy broke out in their house. Joy broke out when they watched the sessions. Or just, you know, or we've just been talking about it and I released the word about the joy of the Lord's returning to the church along with the fear of the Lord. The reverential fear of the Lord's coming back to the church to cause us to honor the Father, honor the Son, and honor the Holy Spirit and really obey Him and yield our lives and not run our own show, but actually move with the kingdom of heaven. Actually like Jesus where He said, I don't do anything unless I see the Father doing it. I don't say anything unless I hear the Father saying it. Like he was so yielded, you know, it's the fear of the Lord. That's part of the fear of the Lord. You're, you're afraid to do anything outside of the word of the Lord. Afraid to. I'm afraid to. Sometimes the Lord will give me words and I'll just sit on them for a while because I need, I need confirmation. And the Lord knows and I'll ask him. I'll say, Lord, you've got to confirm this. And I'll sit on them. And, 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 but there's sometimes where I do release words like this dream because it's like you know that you know the Lord is giving that dream to you because it was one of those dreams that within a dream within a dream dreams that the Lord always speaks to me prophetically in. It's like he's taking us into that dimension, you know, that dream dimension where we can hear clearly, see clearly, and just ask for that, guys. It's happened in this season. If you haven't been having a prophetic dream language, if it hasn't been activated in you, Lord, we just activate that right now in them. Or give them dreams. Starting tonight, Father, just activate them. Activate their dream language, Father. Speak to them clearly at night. Speak to them, Father, directions, instructions, and what you want them to hear, Father. In Jesus' name, I thank you for it. Woo, glory. I feel the Holy Spirit. So, guys, it is time to awaken. It is time. Take these sessions prophetically every time just because it's called Awaken the Heart. It's time. God is awakening the heart of his church. Aren't you excited? I wish I could just run around and just be so excited because the church is going to be on fire again, yielded to the Holy Ghost, not doing our own show, not doing our own thing, but really yielding to the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'm just so happy. Okay, I'll stop shaking the screen. <laughs> just so happy oh, this is a day to be excited jump in don't miss it get in the somewhere get in with the body of Christ somewhere and just get in get in the wave get in with what God's doing be part of this we need you what you're doing is important we need each other. I need you guys. We need each other. You guys pray for us. Please pray for us. I need you guys to pray. Just always pray. <laughs> pray without ceasing. Pray for us. Whoa. Thank you. I feel those prayers right now. I feel that. I feel the glory just hit me when I said that. The Lord wants you guys to pray for me. He's He's, he's confirming that I need to be asking you guys for prayers. Now, there's nothing wrong. Nothing's going on. I'm just talking about constantly praying for us and what God is doing. You know, pray a covering over us for the angelic hosts to be around us, for the glory of the Lord to go before us and behind us and be on all sides, for people to be drawn to come into our meetings, guys, so that they can get set free. This is what I want. That people will come and they'll be drawn and they don't even know why and that they'll come in there and that they'll get free. 
God will just set them free. Guys, people just come up front weeping. They don't even need words most of the time, just the presence of God. You know, we had people, unbelievers coming in the meeting in Kansas, and they started weeping, guys, before the meeting even started. People were just in there talking. An unbeliever, guys, and I know this because they told, they shared with the pastors after. They didn't believe in the, in the, the Lord. They're not saved. They came into the session. They came into the meeting. It was about to start, and they started weeping. Because why the presence of God should draw people to repentance? It's His goodness. It's His presence. It's His glory. He'll draw them. And they'll come up to the front and they'll lay everything down that's between them and the Lord. And they will get filled with the joy of the Holy Ghost. And we saw that this week. Last weekend. Whoa. And tonight we're going to see the Lord just have His way. Just have your way. I don't care what it looks like. might look messy, but I don't care. Listen, I'm not going to be moved on by the opinions of men and what people think I should be doing or not doing. You know, I'm, I don't care. I don't care if people think the joy of the Lord is not God. I don't care because I love Him more than anybody else. And I know that's what He's doing, and I know that's how He's moving. You know, so, you know, if people want to persecute me for it, they can go right ahead. Because, woo, I'll get rewarded for it. So they can go right ahead. Okay, we won't go off on that. I feel the presence of the Lord. And please, guys, be praying and just yielded to the Holy Spirit about how you could partner with us, uh, not just prayerfully, but financially. You know, some of you could partner with us. You're blessed by these sessions. And, you know, we need you. And, and I'm not trying to, like, beg for money. Y'all know me, please. But we need you so that we can go places and do things. And, and you guys providing you know, uh, financial support for us is huge. You know, we're going to be doing stuff overseas at some point, you know, and things like that. And we need the body of Christ. So if God moves upon your heart, if your heart just, you, you're blessed by our ministry, you're blessed by these sessions, and you can give one time or you can give monthly. And many of you have, and you've joined monthly, and we appreciate that. You know, we appreciate what you so into when you're sowing into us and we pray for y'all we do we pray for y'all all the time money and i come together and pray for our partners we can't do it without you i'm so thankful gosh i'm just a cry baby today <laughs> i am so thankful though i am the lord is just doing it you know and and he moves upon people's hearts to give i already know he does it all the time so faithfully so faithfully but if you want to do it, just go to our website. You can find the link on my page, on my profile. You can Somebody can type it in, www.contagiouslove.com. You can donate there. There's a donate for one time. There's a donate for monthly. If you can't figure it out and you need help maneuvering the website, you know, please feel free to message me or email us, info at contagiouslove.com, and I will walk you through it, okay? But these are great times. I just feel the presence of the Lord so strong. And I pray that your heart was encouraged today, that your heart was awakened today, that this session blessed you today.